the class in this class i am going to explain about the characters general characters of the platyhelminthes animals see the platyhelminthes animals which is derived from two latin words one is platy and the second one is helminthes helminthes platy means flat helminths means worms so platy helminthes means a flat worms so the flat worms comes under this phylum that is platy helminthes these platy helminthes animals are dorso ventrally of this body is flattened dorso ventrally of these animals are flattened hence those animals are known as platy helminthes animals in this platy helminthes animals animals are dorso ventrally flattened animals comes under these platy helminthes at first these platy helminthes animals the term platy helminthes which is coined by a scientist name is gegenbauer so the gegenbauer is the scientist who coined the term platy helminthes animals so all these platy helminthes animals it moves in only one way so the movement of all these animals are unidirectional movement unidirectional movement we'll see the unidirectional movements in these animals yeah. and the body wall body wall that bears the mucus secreting secreting part and the body wall that bears thick cuticle if the body wall that bears the mucus secreting part this part is known as rhabditis rhabditis there is the thick cuticle this is known as tegument outer covering outer coat of the organism is known as tegument uh here we have sitting what's over here see what's a repeat all these points again platy helminthes means flat worms the body that bears dorso ventrally flattened animals the term platy helminthes was coined by the gegenbauer and those are the movements are unidirectional movements and this body wall that bears thick cuticle and the mucus secreting part the mucus secreting part that bears the body wall is rhabditis whereas the thick cuticle is known as tegument that is called as tegument and this is the animals and these are the animals the common characters of these animals in these animals in these animals level of organization level of organization in these animals are organ level of organization so these animals that exhibit the organ level of organization all the meta metabolic activities those are carried out by the organs only hence these animals level of organization is organ level of organization only what phylum that exhibit this level of organization that is organ level of organization 
seen in these Platy Helminthus animals. And coming to the next one is germ layers. Germ layers. This is the first triploblastic and phylum. So all these animals are triploblastic and animals that have three germinal layers ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. These are the three germinal layers are present here. So these animals, first triploblastic and animals are first triploblastic and animals are platy helminthus animals that have ecto, meso, and endoderms. And coming to the symmetry of these animals, symmetry of these animals. The body can be divided into two equal parts through the anterior posterior axis of the see this is the symmetry is bilateral bilateral symmetry so the symmetry of the platy helminthus animals exhibit bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry and coming to that Coelom. The coelom of these animals, see the coelom, acelomates, pseudocelomates, schizocelomates. In that, the coelom is acelomates. Acelomates. Acelomates means between the body wall and inner organs, the coelom is completely absent. So the Outer body wall, inner inner organs, between the space it is filled with the parenchyme. So in this parenchyme the organs cannot move freely in the parenchyme. So this type of coelom we will see in these animals, acelomates. These coelom, these are acelomates. Okay, and uh, one more important point. All these animals all these animals are endoparasites endoparasites according to the location of these animals where these organisms are located on the body of the organisms those animals are segregated into ectoparasites and endoparasites ecto means above Endo means inside, uh, above, and the endo means inside. So the parasites that lives on the host body is known as ectoparasites, and the parasites that lives inside the body of the organism is known as endoparasites. All these animals, all these platy helminthus animals are endoparasites that lives inside the body of the organism. Those are endoparasites. This about the digestive system. Digestive system. So the, par the parasites that have no specialized digestive system because of the some of the enzymes that damages the body wall. So it lacks the digestive system. Digestive system is poorly developed. So completely the digestive system it is absent in tinea solium. In tinea solium it is completely absent that is a pork table wall. So but in this tinea solium mouth, pharynx and intestine mouth, pharynx, intestine. These three parts are present but the anus is absent. So the digestive system that possesses only one opening, only one opening that is mouth that serves both the ingestion and digestion process. So this digestive canal is, uh, the gut is incomplete gut. 
that is incomplete get it is an example for incomplete get so because only one opening it has and coming to the respiratory system in the respiratory system it has no specialized respiratory organs so the respiration no specialized respiratory organs in this one so respiration is completely absent they do the anaerobically anaerobically and coming to the transport system or the circulatory system or circulation circulatory system or the transport system or the circulation see in these animals it has no specialized circulatory organs the digestive system is highly branched highly branched digestive system this highly branched digestive system helps to circulate the materials from one place to another place that is only circulation this is a highly branched digestive system helps to circulate the materials towards the body parts only but it is not at all involved to collect the materials from such parts so it is helps to circulate the materials towards the body parts only so the digestive system is highly branched in these animals that helps to circulate the materials from one part to another part okay na? and coming to the next one is excretory system excretory system in these animals in these animals the excretory system includes proto nephridia or flame cells proto nephridia are the flame cells or solenocytes proto nephridia are the flame cells are the solenocytes are the excretory organs seen in platyhelminthes animals so first excretory organs seen in these platyhelminthes animals repeat it again first triploblastic animals platyhelminthes first excretory organs seen in platyhelminthes only so first triploblastic animal that exhibit excretory organs are flame cells nothing but solenocytes are the protonephridia see in this protonephridia the primary function of the protonephridia is not for excretion the primary function of the protonephridia is osmoregulation osmoregulation regulates the water and electrolyte balance osmoregulation whereas the secondary function of these prime flame cells is excretion the secondary function is only excretion primary function osmoregulation and the secondary function is excretion of these animals and coming to the nervous system in these animals the nervous system includes cephalic ganglia and uh, abdominal ganglia cephalic ganglia and the abdominal ganglia that forms the nerve net nerve net so in this one cephalic uh, ganglion tubular nerve cord tubular nerve cord that forms the nerve net in these animals no specialized sensory organs in these animals 
दीज एनिमल्स आर मोनिशियस All these platyhelminthes animals are monoecious animals. In this one, to the sexually and uh, asexually, sexually and asexually, asexually by asexually by regeneration, regeneration. in planaria in planaria that is a dubacia planaria or dubacia the regeneration process seen in this planaria and uh, fragmentation also in tinea solia tinea fragmentation also and coming to the fertilization process the process of fertilization that takes place inside the body hence it is internal fertilization fertilization that includes the internal fertilization because the process of fertilization that takes place inside the body internal fertilization in these animals the larva stages are mirasidium sporocyst sarcaria metasarcaria metasarcaria reedia hexacanth echinococcus several larva stages are there in these platyhelminthes animals so due to the presence of the larva stages the process the development of these animals are indirect development development of these animals is indirect development and one more for example these animals tinea solium tinea solium the body of the tinea solium is divided into that is a scolex neck and a strobila three parts in the scolex region it has these are suckers these are suckers and uh, these are hooks so in these animals these hooks and uh, suckers these are helps to anchor in the body with the with the host so these two parts are acts as their hold fast organs hold fast organs of the platyhelminthes animals are hooks and suckers right so these are helps to move the organism from one place to another place easily see the body is divided into segments several segments these segments those segments in a tinea solium we call as proglottids these segments it is it will see uh, these segments complete segmentation seen in externally but internally the body is not divided into chambers so we will see the segmentation outside of the body not inside of the body so this is the segment a segmentation is false segmentation false segmentation in this fall segmentation the body is divided into uh, body is divided into so many segments externally not internally this type of segmentation seen in these platyhelminthes animals now coming to the examples fasciola hepatica 
This fasciola hepatica, the common name is liver fluke. Liver fluke that causes liver rot diseases in snakes. And coming to the cystosoma hematobium, this is commonly called as blood flukes. And tinea solium, so the people who are eating the um, eating the uh, pork. So that is uh, it causes a disease is a teniasis. So the tinea solium common name is pork tapeworm. Echinococcus granulosus, that is a dog tapeworm. Dog tapeworm. Planaria common name is Dugasia. Tinea sazinata that is called beef tape worm. See, I will repeat it again. Fasciola hepatica, liver fluke. Schistosoma hematobium that is blood fluke. Tinea solium, pork tape worm. Echinococcus granulosus, dog tape worm. Planaria bugacea. Tinea sazinata that is beef tape worm. Okay,